Miss Evelyn. Wow. Oh, wow. back when the mine started back in 1890s. Tools have come a long way. Up until 1900, everything had to be drilled by hand. Miners worked eight hour shifts, which is decent. They also paid very well at 50 cents an hour. Oh, wow. Nice. But back then, that was good wages. That was good money. Yeah. Drill the holes for the dynamite, just turn the drill still every time it was hit. When using a chisel tip, you just gradually chip in the granite away, wind up with a nice round hole with that dynamite down here. Mm. They do all day long. Wow. Now drilling the blast pattern for the tunnel, about 20 holes. That's your lengths of steels that they would use, just go longer each time. Drilling every hole to that 30 foot depth took them 24 hours. 24? At least 24 hours. And I'm kind of a chicken. That's a little more than the amount of light they'd be working with. Oh. Uh, and half, part of the time they couldn't even use the lantern. I'd say they could use the lantern maybe 25-30% of the time. The rest of the time they were drilling by candlelight. There just was not enough oxygen to support that lantern back then and them too. The mines weren't connected like they are today. And boy, they, they had to be careful. Every miner always come underground with at least two or three candles in their pocket. Now the term I showed you here, that's called single jacking. These guys over here are double jacking. The guy at the 20 pounder there was called the striker, drill steel over his shoulder, he was called the shaker. Really not a comfortable position to be in. About the only job benefit you'd have there, you just wouldn't see it coming at you. You may never put them else. Mm -hmm. <laughs> why didn't they, when they were using those guys, why didn't they have like a channel or sort a of player or something to hold that right so they didn't have to hold their hand there? It, it's just easier when they had to turn it. Just grabbing it by hand. Eventually you get good at it after a while. Pardon? Where you don't miss. Yeah, oh, you, you miss once in a while. <laughs> good idea not to miss. Yeah, good idea not to. The district consists of about a six mile radius. Within that, they sank 500 mine shafts. Underground, there's somewhere between five and 6,000 miles of interconnecting tunnel. Every mine connected. It didn't have to pump the water. You just keep passing it on to the neighbor. And there was three tunnels driven from up the side of the mountain between here and Canyon City off the shelf road. You just passed your water on to the neighbor, so on and so forth, and eventually it just runs out of the side of the hill. Uh, today it's the airflow we're benefiting from. Area's on the same level, the air's not moving, it's over 100 degrees. So we got a nice swamp cooler around. Mm -hmm. And if we're ready, we've got tons to see, so follow me on down this way. Yeah. <laughs> Please come down and get you a look at what's happening back here. So you kind of know what I'm talking about. That mud pile back there, <coughs> that would be the same size pile if you drilled the glass holes to six foot like we do today and shoot it. It was about 12 to 14 tons. Now that right there, that was your entry level. That's where they put all the new guys. New guys in the mines were called tenderfoots. Just like on a ship, you're a green one. And they had to work their way up through. The old timers, they were kind of schooling you. You know, forming you the way they needed you. Good working condition back there. They'd expect them to load two or three of those one ton ore cars every hour. Oh my God. If they couldn't keep up, they were let go. There were people lined up waiting to take their job. They were willing to do it. Now, this guy here, old Jack Dempsey, his family moved up here from Manassas. He graduated high school in Victor. When he graduated, he worked at a couple of the mines, you know, and he didn't cut the mustard. They let him go from every job he had. They said he wasn't keeping up. And I don't buy that for a minute. I just don't think they have the guts to tell him to get off his ass and get to work. I think that was a bigger deal. About 1915, they had equipment. They were trying to get things to come along. But nothing worked like I'm close to 12 feet at the rocker show. In fact, they used the uh, competitors' uh, same equipment on the inside of it, their motors. Gardner Denver came out and like two 
it wasn't the machine, this same equipment, but put together different, I guess. Anyway, that thing will load one ton ore car like this one in under a minute. It runs off compressed air, guys, so I get when it's in motion, it's going to be noisy. Are we ready? Yeah! Just messing up your whole world, aren't we, honey? <laughs> okay, we'll get to moving here. Maybe we'll get the scene distracted here a little bit. If I get a little schooling, maybe I don't have to bust my butt anymore. Self-supporting. I haven't seen any beams yet. Yeah. Just every time we shoot, we scale everything down, bar down on things. Every day we check the tour route still. You know, make sure everything's good and secure. But as long as you watch the back, you're you're in good shape. <laughs> the pattern that you see drilled out here, that's the same way they drill those holes even if they're shooting black powder. Back before 1850. Wow. We still use that same pattern. We just use a different different explosives we spread them out. That's what took them the 24 hours to drill all those holes. Now at the turn of the century the column drill came along it sped things up tremendously. They can now drill every hole six foot deep in about six hours. Whoa. Most of their time was having to tear it down and set it up. It was not that drill time. Drilling you could drill a two foot section in about a minute. Is all it would take. This piece right here is over 200 pounds. And it took two or three people when you were setting it up. So this here, these are very important. They're called jack tanks. And they are here just due to the fact that little particle known in granite known as silica. You gotta keep down that dust. We just put water in them, put compressed air, and it brings the water through the drill, and the drill seals them all. And not only does it keep down the dust for us, it also keeps everything a little cool. Things will last a little bit longer. And are we okay now? <laughs> Just right in time if I fire this thing up, she's gonna get pissed. <laughs> I, I wonder, maybe if you just kind of walk back down towards that trail there for a minute. This is an amazing place. We'll let her get down a little ways and then wow. we'll fire it up. First time bit. ever in my life. I can't run it for very long anyway. It's just gonna hammer itself to death. But that one pop is gonna be enough to set it on. Okay, here we go. Fire in the hole. Ooh. That was a little fire. Hold on. Big fire. Ooh. Wow. wow. Good. Wow. <laughs> oh my God. Are you going up? Is that just to stabilize it, or is it actually doing something? That's stabilizing the drill. Oh. Yeah. See, it's mounted off of right here. Okay. And that's what took so much. You know, it, one guy basically tightening it while two guys are holding it. Oh in place. And you can drill, you know, a certain amount of holes off that same line, like right here. Mm. You know, you, when you knew what you were doing, you can get them lined up and do that same line. That way you're just lifting it before you have to move that center thing. But yeah. How many men lost their jobs when this came along? None. None? Wow, none. The drills, more? them hand skills is what lost their job. Oh. oh. Actually, this added. This added where one guy could drill them holes. This one took at least two, if not three. Oh. Just because of the size and weight. I see. You know, one guy ain't gonna do it by himself. 